It's disgusting for an old hag to get pregnant. If you take maternity leave, you're fired. The one who suddenly yelled at me with a vein throbbing on his forehead was the new branch manager who had just joined last month. Jason, who always looked down on the rehired veteran employees, became visibly annoyed when I informed him that I was taking maternity leave. A veteran employee who happened to be nearby overheard our exchange and trembled in fear. Branch manager, your life is over. My condolences. Jason looked puzzled, not understanding the implication. But it wasn't surprising. He didn't know anything about my standing in this company. My name is Kathy. I work as a pharmacist at a pharmacy attached to a major supermarket. My husband and I had been too busy with our work to have children, but at 42, I found out I was pregnant. We were overjoyed to finally have a child. Although it was a late pregnancy, I was determined to give birth even if it meant risking my life. Around that time, the previous branch manager transferred to another store, and Jason, the new branch manager, arrived. Jason had been a branch manager at another pharmacy before his career change. Although he was competent in his work, his human decency seemed to have been left behind in his mother's womb. He regularly mocked me for being pregnant at an older age and belittled the veteran employees who were rehired. No one would believe that an old hag like you is pregnant with that big belly. They just think you're fat. Excuse me? Did you just call me an old hag? Well, you're over 40, right? So yeah, old hag is about right. I was more shocked than angry at his nonchalant, unashamed remarks. He also looked down on the veteran employees, calling them pathetic old folks clinging to the pharmacy even after retirement, and didn't even try to hide his immature thoughts. Despite the company rehiring these highly capable individuals, Jason was indifferent, hating them solely for their age. He even went as far as to intentionally delete data they were working on or report non-existent mistakes to the headquarters. We've got quite a troublesome guy here, huh? Steve, a veteran pharmacist who was rehired at 65, sighed. Well, he's just joined, so let's give it a little more time. Everyone working at the pharmacy agreed and endured his behavior in silence. However, Jason's arrogant attitude showed no sign of improvement. He would be polite and courteous to customers and superiors but treated us pharmacists and colleagues condescendingly. One day, an elderly female customer looked worriedly at the shelves of medicine. May I help you? Jason always greeted customers with a smile and politeness, but he struggled with the actual assistance afterward. My grandchild has caught a cold, but do you have any cold medicine suitable for a three-year-old? He ended up passing the customer off to another staff member. Uh, please wait a moment. Is Steve around? Steve, with his extensive knowledge and amiable demeanor, was a beloved and relied upon pharmacist among us. However, to Jason, Steve was just an old man hanging around the pharmacy. Steve, attend to the customer. I don't know about the medicine. Yes, of course. I'll help her. Jason's behavior was always like this, condescending but ultimately useless, offloading his work onto us and making his poor attitude even more apparent. While qualifications are required for pharmacists, Positions like clerical or support roles, including branch managers, can be filled without qualifications. However, it's essential for someone in charge of a pharmacy to have at least some knowledge about the medicines. Jason, though, never lowered his head to us pharmacists, refusing to study or ask for guidance. How he managed to hold his position as branch manager was beyond us. Time passed and my due date approached. 
I had informed the previous branch manager about my maternity leave, and it was approved. However, Jason, knowing this from the handover, tried to ignore it and make me continue working. What? You're taking time off to slack? Work until the last minute. I can't do this anymore. It's a high-risk pregnancy as it is. That's not my problem. Besides, it's disgusting for an old hag to get pregnant. If you take maternity leave, you're fired. Jason's high-handed attitude was relentless. This was his usual demeanor in the staff room away from customers. Hey, branch manager. Steve, who was in the same room and overheard our conversation, widened his eyes as if he had seen something terrifying. Trembling, he directed his voice towards Jason. Branch manager, your life is over. My condolences. Huh? What do you mean, all of a sudden? Jason looked puzzled, but then he understood Steve's words when he saw where Steve was looking. President. Tony, the president overseeing our pharmacy group happened to be visiting for an inspection at that moment. From his expression, it was clear he had overheard our entire exchange. Jason, what did you mean by your earlier statement? President, thank you for coming all the way here. I don't need your flattery. I asked what you meant. Ignoring Jason's groveling, Tony coldly questioned him. Actually, this woman, Kathy, said she wanted to take maternity leave, so I was strictly reprimanding her. Taking maternity leave is a rightful entitlement. Why did you need to reprimand her? Well, a late pregnancy at her age won't go well anyway. A 42-year-old pregnant woman? Who knows what kind of life she's been leading? Jason laughed unpleasantly, shrugging exaggeratedly. You're only 40 yourself, Jason. Not much of a difference. Shut up! You're just an old hag! Tony frowned at Jason's old hag comment. Although I felt a sense of triumph, Steve seemed very worried. I can't overlook what you just said. You called Kathy an old hag earlier, didn't you? No! That must be a mistake. No need to make excuses now. I already told Tony about your it's okay to call you an old hag if you're over 40, right? Jason, trying to cover up, was wide-eyed at my words. You called the president by his name. Wait, did the president just call you Kathy too? Yes, because Kathy is my wife. What? It was no wonder Jason was shocked. Only the veteran employees who had worked here for a long time knew about my marriage to Tony. I didn't flaunt it, and I worked under my maiden name, so it was unlikely anyone noticed. It's your fault for not making it clear. Jason, snapping, received a cold look from Tony. Kathy didn't want others to treat her differently because she's my wife. It was her considerate decision. Unlike someone who doesn't have any consideration at all, my effort seems to have backfired. I laughed, and Jason glared at me with frustration. Then, in the staff room, Tony and I started questioning Jason. Jason, you've been quite disrespectful to Kathy and the staff pharmacists, haven't you? Not at all. I was just being friendly and trying to keep things casual. Jason, flustered, struggled to find an excuse. You called me an old hag. Could you be quiet? Jason, losing his composure, banged his palm on the table. Tony watched him with a cold gaze. Jason, give it up. Kathy has told me everything. Steve has been with me since I founded this pharmacy, practically a comrade in arms. 
and you called him a pathetic old man clinging to the pharmacy, didn't you? Jason's face grew paler with each new revelation. As my husband said, Steve had walked alongside him for much longer than I had. Tony had founded the pharmacy with his pharmacist qualification, starting with just one store in a small town. It grew into a nationwide chain over time. I eventually joined one of those pharmacies and married Tony, with Steve celebrating our union. With such a history, Tony was undoubtedly furious about the insults to his comrade and his wife. He kept his anger in check, speaking calmly but sternly to Jason, who continued to make excuses. It's just Kathy's word. You can't trust the other employees. They're all in cahoots. President, I'm innocent. Seeing Jason shouting and spitting, I sighed deeply before my husband did. You're really hopeless, aren't you? What do you mean? Do you think the president would believe me without proof? I presented solid evidence. I nodded at Tony and took a voice recorder from my bag. Jason's face turned even paler. That, that can't be. Yes, that's exactly it. I recorded every word you said. When I pressed play, his abusive comments played back clearly. Stop! Please stop it! Jason, covering his face with his hands, looked horrified. I'm disappointed because I thought you were excellent as a manager. This pharmacy serves elderly customers as well. I don't think someone with a bias against veteran employees is suitable to be a branch manager. We've been lenient because we thought you were new here, but it seems you won't change. We can't continue to tolerate this burden any longer. A burden? Are you saying I'm a burden? That's right. You don't know anything about the medications, you have no desire to learn, and you look down on your employees. We don't need a branch manager like that in our pharmacy. As soon as I said that, Jason suddenly kneeled down in front of me, prostrating himself. Please, wait. I will put in the effort from now on. Let me learn here. I apologize for my previous rudeness. I didn't know your true identity. Jason cried miserably, begging for forgiveness, but my heart remained unmoved. If your attitude would have been different had you known my identity, that speaks volumes about you as a person. Jason, utterly defeated by my words, stayed kneeling on the floor with his head bowed. In the end, Jason was immediately dismissed. After being fired from our pharmacy, word of Jason's behavior spread throughout the industry, making it difficult for him to find employment. Unable to secure a position at another pharmacy, he now survives by working day and night in temporary jobs. This must be a humiliating blow to his pride. As for me, I took maternity leave and, despite the challenges of a late-in-life pregnancy, successfully gave birth to a healthy baby girl. Now, I am happily spending my days with my husband, watching our daughter grow. How did you enjoy this story? Please subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you in the next video.